Hey there and welcome back to NBA 2K18's My League Mode. My name is Pete and today we complete the second episode of our expansion team playthrough. Last time we created two expansion teams, one for us and one for the CPU, and we built our roster in the expansion draft. Today we have a few more things on the list before we can get started, and the first one is to have a look at the free agency pool. In the expansion draft we drafted 14 players, but we can have up to 15 on the roster, and so since there is absolutely no downside to acquiring one more player, let's do exactly that. Our position with the biggest need at the moment is definitely the point guard, where we have only two players, and also none of our shooting guards able to help out. And we are once again going for youth with this one, and so player number 15, the guy to complete our roster, will be 22-year-old Kay Felder. Felder is a solid shooter, especially from mid-range. For a 5'9 guy, he also has a passable drive to the basket. He is an okay distributor, nothing special, but most importantly, he is fast. That, combined with a 77 potential rating, could turn him into a player who gets the occasional minute here and there. For the moment, however, we acquire him as a third-string point guard, and in that role he will likely not see playing time from the beginning. For his contract, we will go with a two-year deal, however, the second year will be a team option. That will give us a bit more flexibility, depending on what moves we make throughout the season, and also in next year's draft. Right, lovely, K. Felder accepts, our roster is now full and we can continue. Up next, we could set our rotations, but there is one thing I'd like to do before we do that, and that is to have a look at our staff. What we can see here are pretty mediocre guys, except for our assistant GM maybe, and we could now theoretically fire each and every one of them and replace them with a much better guy. However, I don't really think that fits the purpose of a realistic approach. Since the team has just been created, these guys have probably been hired within the last few weeks or months, and replacing them now without even a single game played wouldn't make much sense in my opinion. Especially not if we consider that both members of the coaching staff have long-term four-year deals. Still, there is one guy I would like to replace at this point, and that is our head scout. And the reasons for that are really quite simple. First of all, Mike Campbell's scouting rating is really not that great. His C- potential also tells me that he very likely won't get any better, and he's also only on a one-year deal, so we would have to talk about an extension or find a replacement next season anyway. On top of that, the role of head scout is very likely one of the most important on the team for the next few years. I am 100% convinced that without finding good talent in the draft, this team will never make it to a championship, and so having a good scout is essential, especially in the early years of this franchise. And because of those reasons, we sadly have to let him go, which now opens up a spot on the staff and we can look for a replacement. And this time we are going for best available, we need someone who can perform right away, and that person will be Don Carter, an A-graded head scout, who will hopefully be able to find us a few diamonds in the rough. Contract-wise, I really don't see a reason why we shouldn't offer him a four-year deal, but let us not completely overcommit here. Despite his high rating, he hasn't proven himself yet, and so for the moment we will offer him only a two-year deal, but if he pans out, I'm very willing to re-sign him to a longer-term extension. And so roster and staff are looking fine for the moment, let us now proceed with the rotations. Now, the automatically generated lineup gives us a starting five of Ulysses, Richardson, Harkless, Heron Gomez and Diallo. And we are going to make a few changes to that. First of all, I have decided to bring Richardson off the bench and start Alex Imbrinus instead. The reason for that is defense, because Richardson and Harkless are probably our best perimeter defenders, and I would like to have some defense in our second unit as well. That is why Harkless will remain in the starting lineup, but Richardson will move to the bench, otherwise I fear that our second unit will be just too weak defensively. The second guy to leave the starting five will then be Cheek Diallo. And he will be replaced by Deontay Davis, who is hopefully going to be our defensive anchor down low. With 6'10", 240 pounds, Davis is also the biggest guy on the roster, making him arguably a bit more suited for the center position than 6'9", Cheek Diallo. Now for the bench, I have decided to go with six men who will see minutes, and that second unit will be led by Yogi Ferrell at the point guard. I also already mentioned the role of Josh Richardson, so let's talk a bit more about Kuzma and Bertans. Both of them are listed as power forwards, and both of them are also very well suited for the small forward position. Kuzma a bit more as an all-rounder, who's also pretty solid on defense, and Bertans primarily as a floor stretcher. And I would like to give minutes to both of them, at the 3, at the 4, whatever fits, just to get a feel for how they perform with the lineup, and we'll figure things out from there. Then, if neither Kuzma nor Bertans play the power forward for the second unit, that role will go to Bryce Johnson. He is very likely the best post scorer on the team, and he might very well end up as one of the primary scoring options off the bench. 
coming off the bench at center will then be Chik Diallo, who is hopefully able to do enough defensively, because defensively that lineup is a bit weak down low. Vaughn, Fowler, Key and Mack, those are the reserves, and so for the first game we will bring out an 11-man rotation. Right, I've also done some fine-tuning to the rotations, I will spare you the details, so real quick, just the most important things. If we look at Josh Richardson, he will most of the time play with the second unit until we get to the fourth quarter. There he will be part of the finishing five instead of Alex Abrinas, simply because of the defensive upside that Richardson provides. For the moment, Kyle Kuzma will play exclusively as a small forward, while Davis Bertans will see minutes at both the small forward and the power forward position. In the third quarter, Bryce Johnson will also play a few minutes at the center, that is simply to take the load of Chick Diallo, who would otherwise have to battle with opposing centers for 10 minutes straight. And that's it for the rotation. I would say I'm more than excited to see that lineup in action, so let's jump right into the season opener. First game of the season at home against Charlotte. Not an easy task, I think Dwight Howard down low will probably give us a lot of trouble. And this guy right here will likely also have his hands full, Tyler Hewlett, who will defend against Campbell Walker. I will not do a live commentary for this, instead I'll just uh, play the game, see you after that and we'll talk about what happened. Right, it was a close one, but in the end we sadly lost. Not only the game, but also one of our players, but we'll get to that in a minute. Now, we had a pretty poor start to the game, and that was mostly the result of two things. Number one, Kemba Walker just completely outplayed Tyler Eulis, both offensively and defensively as well. Eulis ended up scoring only 6 points, shooting 2 of 7 from the field and also with 5 turnovers, while Walker's 11 of 22 were definitely not super effective either, but in the end he definitely won today's duel at the point guard. The other thing was rebounding, especially on the defensive end, because even though the Hornets had their fair share of misses, they grabbed 18 offensive rebounds and turned half of those into second chance points. And so the first quarter ended quite lopsided, with a 13 point lead for the Hornets. Second quarter, we slowly started to turn things around, Juan Hernan Gomez with a beautiful and one here. However, momentum was quickly stopped when Josh Richardson tweaked his angle on a fallaway jumper. In 9 minutes of play, Richardson had only 2 rebounds at that point, after missing all 4 shots he took from the field. Still, his loss hurt us quite a bit, because in the end Alex Abrines had to see 40 minutes of gameplay action. And Abrinas is also the guy we continue with, because later in the second quarter he caught fire. He was hitting a few pretty tough shots, including, after some solid defense, the go-ahead three-pointer after roughly 20 minutes of play. Cal Kuzma added to that 7 points in the last 3.5 minutes of the second quarter, and so we headed into the halftime break with a small 4-point lead. And you can see it here, we shot much better than the Hornets, but we also turned the ball over frequently, which led to many easy points for Charlotte. Third quarter then, Abrinas kept going, but we were also able to get to the line much more frequently now, and so we quickly build up a nice 15-point lead. Bryce Johnson also started to get going from the post, still we were not able to completely pull away as Jeremy Lamb hit both of his 3-pointers this quarter, and Michael Carter-Williams, despite an overall pretty poor performance, kept his team within striking distance near the end of the third. fourth quarter then, Abrinas had 22 points at this point and he would also finish with that, because the Hornets had begun to double him at this point. We got a bit more production out of Johnson in the post, and Kuzma also added 5 more points this quarter, but in the end we fell to an absolutely monstrous fourth quarter by Campbell Walker and Malik Monk. Walker scored 13 points in the fourth quarter alone, and Monk topped that with 16, including two three-pointers, and so in the end the Hornets outscored us by 20 in the fourth quarter, and eventually won the game with an 8-point lead. A quick look at the stats for our guys, Abrinas was the top scorer with 22 points, including 5 three-pointers, and Kuzma off the bench in just 20 minutes added 15 points as well. Hernan Gomez, Johnson and Pharrell also all scored in double digits, and Pharrell did so in just 18 minutes of game time. Going up against Dwight Howard, Deontay Davis was in foul trouble very early on. He acquired 5 throughout the game, ended up playing only 21 minutes, but he barely missed a double-double with 9 points and 11 rebounds. That way, Diallo actually ended up playing more minutes than Davis. He produced 7 points, 8 rebounds and a steal and also got himself to the line multiple times. Still, he was no match for Howard inside. Now, Euless, I already mentioned it, a bit disappointing with only 6 points and 5 turnovers, but also 9 assists and 3 steals, and those assists should definitely keep coming going forward. 
More Harkless, as one of the best players on the roster, flew a bit under the radar in this one. He shot 2 of 6 from the field for 6 points. He didn't really get a lot of shots, mostly because Abrinas was hot for large stretches of the game, and also because the inside game with Kuzma and Johnson worked pretty nicely. But Hans was mostly quiet, Richardson was injured early and Vaughn only played 1 minute. And uh, yeah, that's about it. That was our first game. Now, first order of business here after the game, we're going to take Josh Richardson out of the rotation entirely. He is listed as day-to-day, -day, but only one game into the season I'm not going to risk anything. He can sit for a few days, let the injury heal, and then hopefully return at full strength. In the meantime, Alex Abrinas has definitely earned himself a few more minutes after last night, now up to 32, and for the remaining 16 minutes at the shooting guard, we will see more for Shard Vaughn. Now, here is how we're going to continue this. I will of course not play or go into detail about every single game we play. Actually, I would like to finish this first season within the next 2 or 3 episodes. So the majority of games will be simulated, I will talk a bit more about key games whenever they appear, and whenever we have injuries, breakout performances or anything else to talk about, we will of course do that. So far, I think we have a promising start to the season. The injury to Richardson is very unfortunate at this point, but if Abrinas can keep up his performance, we should be fine. And so I'd say that's it for today's episode. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you'd like to see. I'm not quite sure whether or not we'll make any trades this first season, but feel free to leave your ideas already. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up, and of course, if you want to support the channel, then feel free to subscribe, and I can say thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!